Yo ass up or take a damn nap. And we're the three best friends that anybody could have. It's time. You were tw- I mean, Sean, you were twerking. That's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> Murph, don't be a dick all your life. This is uh one of one of the more fun podcasts I've ever done. Hey, I'll tell you what, if you're not talking about sports in the man cave, you no, I bet I say you're not a man. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Hey, it's big time big here, time. episode 80 of Man. Stories Inside the Man Cave. Man. Hardball Hards will join us here in about five minutes. And uh, you know what we like to do in Stories Inside the Man Cave is tell great stories from legends, in particular here in Austin. Uh, um, I'm grateful to call this guy a friend, uh, Butch Hadnot from the Texas Longhorns of the past, from the Deep East Texas. And, but before we... Move on with you, Butch. I have to give a shout out to our very loyal and generous sponsors. That being one of your former teammates, uh, Jimmy Saxton, the Jim Saxton State Farm Insurance Agency. And of course, uh, Cosmic Coffee and Beer Garden on the south side of Austin. Uh, Tremendous sponsors. And they have been loyal since day one, since this was even an idea, a concept. Butch had not one of the best. Freshman football seasons in Longhorn football history, straight out of East Texas, Kirbyville. Butch, this has to rate up on your resume as uh, one of the, you know, finer achievements of actually getting the experience inside a man cave such as this, right? (laughs) Exactly, because I really didn't know what to what to expect, but uh, this 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 is pretty cool. Yeah, (laughs) man, it's uh, it is definitely. Uh, how can uh, I say this? A privilege, an honor, because an honor you and I are about the same age. The same age. Yes, I'm, 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 I'm half a century. Half a century. <laughs> and the one thing about you is that you came in as a freshman in 1990 and achieved what many were not many aware of in an already of talented backfield, backfield at Texas. Texas. So, without talking without about it talking any further, it. I want to show the world, and I want to take particular some video of you against the University of Houston in 1990. Keep in mind, Texas had been on the, I guess you could say, a downward trend from like 84 right. to 89. And this right. is the show, and I've got to tell folks who are not, just watching this, don't know a lot about Texas football. And I'll get your opinion when we return after this video, but I think this was the loudest that DKR, if not top five. But check out this video of Butch had night when he was a freshman as a Longhorn. Seems like yesterday, doesn't it? Seems like yesterday, doesn't it? It feels like yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> man, those 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 were fun times, man. It, those it was a lot of fun back in back in the day, and uh, you know that started the uh, you know the Shock the Nation tour. Is when you before that year started. Um, you were labeled as Little Earl as a potential next Earl Campbell. Before that year started, uh, the Shock the Nation tour, but before that even started, what was the feeling? Because you came in recruited by David McWilliams. And was there any discussion that we had to get this program turned around? Um, I can 
kind of sensed that, you know, there was some urgency um, when uh, Coach Mack uh, sat down in my uh, grandparents' uh, living room and uh, was talking with me and, and uh, how they, uh, you know, were pursuing me. You know, when you're recruiting and you have a system, you know, you're recruiting certain individuals that you think is going to fit your system. And uh, from what they told me, you know, I answered the question. I mean, you had Adrian Walker, Phil Brown, Chris Samuels, but it was uh, I added that piece that they was uh, that they were missing that that they needed to uh, help turn the program around. You look back, you mentioned back, some of the, that backfield, and uh, it was how can I describe it? You had Peter Gardier at quarterback. He had never lost uh, to Oklahoma that throughout his four years. You mentioned Adrian Walker, a scat back, Phil Brown, a good combination. Chris Samuels could do it all. But how do you sum up that talented run of backfield, so to speak, that you walked into? We it was a type of field that every coach um, you know, dreamed about having, you know, because you each each one of us, I was a combination. And, and uh, along with the power and then the other guys, we all brought a different flavor to the backfield, which kind of, th you know, throws the defense off, Yeah, you know? And, and, and I mean, it, it was, it was a lot of fun playing with those guys and we all competed with each other. No, no one ever got jealous of each other or anything like that. We supported, we competed with each other in the weight room and we competed with each other in practice and, and, and in the game. Now, I've got to ask you before we move forward here, uh, everybody may be looking in and focusing in on this. That's right here, the very first sty I have ever had in my life. That's uh, hard to believe. I, it is, man. It really is. I've had a few other things, but it looks like marvelous Marvin, Marvin Hagler just took a jab at me right in the right eye, and I took one for the team. But uh, that's what that is. And before we move you sure forward, one, Mike Tyson? you know, Tyson, hey, <laughs> He would have knocked me into the next area code, Butch. <laughs> he would have knocked me from the 512 over there to uh, 936 or whatever, oh, wow. 409, where you're from. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hell of a punch. Yeah, it is. Jeez. So I had to ask before we move on about your the Longhorn career and your personal story. The name, image, and likeness is a significant deal right now. It's long overdue. You and I talked about it uh, before on the phone, and everyone's talking about it. What would the name, image, likeness have been like if, if it was presented by the NCAA and the state governors and governors, you know, the, the governments and, and approved back in your day in 1990? Man, it, it, I mean, I can only imagine, you know, because we didn't get anything, you know, and, and a lot of people, you know, made money off of our, you know, off our names and, you know, and, and, and such. So, I mean, if that would have taken place back then, I mean, you know, some, some of us came from, you know, broken homes and, you know, uh, uh, low income neighborhoods and, you know, and everything. So that could have really, you know, uh, uh, helped us out a lot. Uh, I'm glad to see it, uh, you know, now. And I think that it just, it was just something long overdue because, you know, things like that, you know, in my opinion, been going on up under the table and then I, I never could understand how NCAA could stop it. So I guess they said, you know, we'll go ahead. I mean, you know, leave it up to the university to, you know, to, uh, allow this to happen or you know whatever and we'll just sit back on it yeah it, it's pretty significant, it pretty significant. Deal. when you think about all of the years of uh, jerseys are made uh no numbers your face uh, is our own things how were things then opposed to now right before this has become such a significant topic it it was uh, I'll tell you I'll tell you what a perfect example. Um, after my freshman year, uh, someone and I don't know who 
but someone made a lot of money off of my namesake. Uh, there were some T-shirts made that was saying could not, would not, should not, better had not mess with Texas. <laughs> and I, you know, for legal reasons, I never really pushed the issue, uh, you know, to, to try to find out who created it, you know, what was going on, you know, and and everything because, you know, we couldn't get, you know, any monies or, you know, anything like that, you know. So, uh, and I'm, I'm, my opinion, that person made a lot of money off of my namesake back then. Uh, so, you know, to, to, to do it now, I mean, I, I'm all happy for the kids, you know. I mean, 100%. Really, just think, I just think if, uh, yeah. just think if, uh, this was going on and for someone like, uh, 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 Vince Young, you know, Colt McCoy, you know, and Sam Allinger, you know what I'm saying? Just think of this was going on when those guys were playing. Yeah, that's it, it, it's really bizarre when you really think about it that uh, the independent people, you know, obviously people can only make uh, T-shirts and any type of paraphernalia with the UT logo that is copied. You know, they, they're out there searching for – copyright infringement and whatnot but you know you have had quite a vision of major college athletics you were a significant part of it but I think also you know moving past the name image likeness I think your story honestly is one of the if not one of the most fascinating and intriguing you may not agree with it but you have been an inspiration to others to not only come back, return, and finish uh, your degree, but also be an active member of your community, especially to the kids, because you came from some humble beginnings. Hard work and family, if you will. I mean, I'm from a little bitty country town of, you know, Kirbyville, Texas, and, um, you know, my uh, uh, I'm from a football family. Uh, my cousin, Bubba Bean, uh, played running back at a m in the 70s, and uh, he from Kirbyville, and I broke his rushing records in high school. Uh, you know, uh, Kevin Smith, uh, 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 Sam Adams. You know, we're all, they're all, you know, from East Texas, and uh, coming from where I come from, man, I'm, I mean, my grandparents raised me and, uh, you know, hauling wood and hauling, hauling hay. You know, people used to think I was on steroids, but, you know, that, that was just from that type of work I was doing. You know, I couldn't uh, I couldn't uh, go and enjoy a weekend. You know, I couldn't, you know, here it is. I done had an awesome f game Friday night, Saturday morning. Shit, my ass was up at 5 o'clock in the morning. I was working, you know, <laughs> I mean, me and my grandfather, you know. So those, those type of things, those type of work ethics, um, you know, is what has, you know, grown on me and I learned from, and that's what, you know, uh, I felt like, it was, you know, there was nothing I couldn't do as far as when I did get to UT, you know, yeah, I saw some, you know, bigger guys, but, you know, that didn't intimidate me. And, and I never complained about the work, you know, because I was determined coming from where I come from, uh, you know, I mean, hell, I'm, I'm only uh, my hometown is only like 35 miles uh, from Vider, Texas. Yeah. And, you know, so I dealt with a lot of, you know, things growing up uh, that really I just used that as a tool to motivate me. Um, when I graduated, well, before I graduated high school, I, uh, you know, I, I, either two things you was going to do coming from where I come from, uh, Sean, you was going to either go work at the paper mill I'll go to the military. And when I saw my name, you know, in the newspapers and, and everything, I was like, wow, I can, I can go to college, you know, being raised by two grandparents that never had a high school education. And, you know, and I being the first in my family, in my immediate family to, uh, you know, to go to college. And so I was determined, I was made a promise that, uh, to my grandfather that I was going to make my name known because people, you know, kind of put me down. You know, it took me two times to, to, to pass the SAT test. Um, 
you know, and after I passed the first time, after I failed the first test, oh, everybody was talking, you know, in the community. Oh, he's not going to be anything. He's not going to do anything. And, you know, then lo and behold, I passed, you know, they still was kind of having their doubts, you know, but hey, I knocked it out the box, got the UT and all those ones that was talking about me, all of them showed up at that Houston game, you know, which was yeah. very, uh, it was very shocking to me. Every last one of them, they showed up at the Houston game. And, uh, but I, here's my thing though. I didn't go over and shake their hands after the game. <laughs> You know, I didn't yeah. do that. I talked to, you know, talked to, you know, some of the fans and everything and went in the, you know, went in the dressing room and everything, you know, because I just had no, you know, I just, that was just me at that time. Yeah. And and how I was raised, you know. Butch, uh, Hardball Hards has joined us. Uh, he's one of our, he is one of the regulars here and he offers a lot of good Feedback content. He he's seen it. He's seen a lot of life. He's from the clean area, and he kind of knows about that as well. You had two choices. Um, of course, Harge took uh, just like you took the athletic route, played um, pro professional baseball, had an offer to UP. Harge, you you can relate a lot to what Butch is saying, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And what I've, I appreciate you, number one, Butch, for being on with us. But most importantly, oh, yeah. the, some of the some of the messaging that you have just been saying since I've been here, you have brought so much light to the re realization of athletes that are trying to get to that next level, right? So you talked about your grades and you talked about how people mm -hmm. approached you. And one of the biggest things that I loved about it was you were like, no, I ain't got nothing to talk about to you. You, you doubted me and you weren't supporting me, you didn't think that I was going to be that guy. Talk about the fact that you got mm -hmm. back, you got that degree, you did everything that you needed to do, and now you're sitting here with a degree from the University of Texas. It, it's it's an amazing thing. It's a, It was a long road. I mean, it, it, you're talking about 90, 90, 80, 90 91, and then come back 2015, you know, in 16. Yeah, we were coming you know, to Texas and, and the I same really year. Didn't, we were coming to Texas I mean, the same and, year. And it was a lot different. It was a lot different. Uh, you know, you, you're in classroom and with these kids, and it's like, damn, was I acting like that? You know, look at these little, man, how these damn, these girls are dressing like this, really? You know, <laughs> things that <laughs> you know what I'm saying, and, and but the thing that stood out the most to me going back is that these kids think that they know more than you do, and they haven't even begun to live. You know, so what made it it was hard working and going to school, raising a family. Man, it, it was it was hard as hell. You know, it was worse than tour days, but. You know, but still, the mad, the fact that I li I have lived, you know, and it has a lot of experiences, that helped me to focus better than I did when I was in school the first time. Because um, it, it, a lot of things going on that you're not accustomed to, it can be a huge distraction. Yeah, Butch, you know, that, that's, that's significant because there's so many distractions nowadays. I mean... Hard and I saw it a lot because we were both in the media together. We saw all these distractions. These kids, you, sure you can see it play out on social media, all these distractions nowadays. You guys didn't have that. But, Butch, one thing that I think everyone who's watching or listening, and, and especially for both Hard and I, you know, we, we watched all that drama play out from afar with when Makovic came in. Um, you led, took the visit to A&M. Uh, Makovic suspended you for, quote, being academically ineligible. W what is the truth behind that? Because there's so many parts of that story that no one really knows what really happened. Something that shocked me. You know, we all, you know, did some things back in the day, but uh, – Susan Halliburton had, uh, and I 
don't want to throw her name out there like that, but Susan Halliburton, uh, you know, you wrote did, up an article. Bro, you did. <laughs> she she wrote up an article about me getting arrested in uh, in uh, Manor for a speeding ticket that I didn't that I never paid. Because uh, I mean, back then, you know, I mean, I was Butch Hadnot was like the you know, like the Emmett Smith and, you know, and, and, and with the Cowboys, you know, I'm, you know, it was, it was all over the place. And so um, that got out. And the fact of the matter is, is that I was really hurt when Texas got rid of David McWilliams and uh, Lynn Amity, my offensive coordinator at the time was talking to me and trying to persuade me to follow him to LSU. And I thought long and hard about it, but then I said, no, I didn't feel, I didn't, I didn't want to start all over again. You know, and I said, well, you know what? This guy is coming in. I think I can handle it, you know, with him. But he, you know, he turned out to be an asshole. Uh, and I mean, you know, hey, the truth is the truth. Um, so I, what went down, if everybody must know, what went down, I was in East Texas visiting my family. Sam Adams was in East Texas. Sam Adams called me, said, hey, when you heading back to Austin? And I said, I'm, I'm leaving out, you know, such and such. So he got a ride with me. I dropped him off at Texas A&M. As soon as I get to Austin, I hear Butch Hadnot was seen on Texas A&M. Butch Hadnot was talking to R.C. Slocum about wanting to transfer. I didn't do no such thing. You know, yeah, I mean, I know, you know, Sam and, you know, uh, 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 the other guys that was playing, Kevin Smith, you know, all those guys that was there. Yeah, I chatted with them, you know, a few minutes, you know, homeboys, you know. But uh, next thing I know, McAvick gets on national tel television. Now, true enough, I did have some issues, you know, with my grades, but that's why I was going to summer school, uh, you know, to boost it up. Uh, because to be honest with you, had I worked as hard as I did in the weight room and and really balanced myself and put in that same effort in in in, in the classroom, I wouldn't have ended up in that situation you know, where my grades was kind of in jeopardy, you know, but hey, you young, you know, and, and I got caught all up into the hype, you know, so McAvey got on national television and said Butch had not was going to report in with the veterans, um, you know, but he would not let a reporter talk to me. I think, Sean, you was working at KVU at the time. Um, I, I was still, I, I, I was just getting started uh, in West okay. Texas. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so he, uh, what's your name? Uh, Rick Barnes. Uh, Mike Barnes. Mike yeah. Barnes. Mike Barnes. Mike yeah. Barnes was trying to. Mike Barnes was trying to talk, interview me, come out to see me, and McAvick wouldn't let him. Uh, so McAvick got when he got on TV said, "Hey, Butch and I was going to be reporting in with the veterans." You know, I didn't think nothing of it. You know, I go, I move all my stuff in my dorm room. Two hours later, I get a phone call. Hey, Makovic wants to see you in his office. I said, okay. I go over there. I'm sitting down having a one-on-one -on -one with him. And he tells me, uh, you know, we hear word that you was on Texas A&M campus. And I said, yeah. I, I said, I dropped off my cousin, uh, Sam Adams, and, you know, and everything. And then, you know, he was like, well, we also heard that you uh, was talking to R.C. Slocum about wanting to transfer. And I said, uh, no, that that never happened. I said, well, I, you know, and I was a little high head at the time. I said, where, where the hell you hear this from? You know, and he, he was like, well, I tell you what, until further notice, you know, you're suspended until, you know, we investigate this situation. Because a lot of the guys didn't like him because he would go back and he would – he, he talked to each one of us individually when he first got there. And he would look at your production from your freshman year in high school all the way up until the point where you were now. 
And he would tell you, he told Norman Watkins, Roger Walker, a lot of those guys, you're not going to play for me this year. He, and, you know, and we're like, what? What, you know, what are you talking about? So, yes, I had to go move my stuff out of my room. I called my grandmother and I was trying to, you know, I told her, I said, well, mom, I'm coming home for, I don't know, for a few few weeks or a few days. Or I don't know. Uh, Texas, uh, Makovic suspended me. Uh, pending an investigation of me talking to other coaches about wanting to transfer, you know, and so on. And uh, then also, also, there was a complaint, uh, a rumor about I had called University of Houston wanting to transfer. Now, that you know, the interesting thing about both of them, both of them tried like hell to recruit me. Mike Sherman, when he was uh, at, at a and John Jenkins, when he, you know, he at uh, U of H, man, they they try like hell to recruit me. You know, you know, that recruiting belt, they do anything to, you know, and entice you. Uh, but I take my hat off to, I, I take my hat off to, you know, to John Jenkins because John Jenkins got on, got, you know, answered the call and said, no, I've never spoken to Butch Hadden out about wanting to transfer, you know, and I'm thinking, okay. Well, now the truth is coming out. So, but go back to Makovic. When he suspended me, I got upset. And I told him, I said, you know what type of coach you are? I said, if one of your star players was not performing well, instead of you going over to see what's bothering him, you just sit him down and put somebody else out there. And he was like, you know, you're not going to talk about me like that, buddy, and so on. And, you know, and I got up. I said, I'm gone. I got up and I slammed the door behind me. And he opened up the door and told me I was I was suspended indefinitely. Well, after all the dust had settled and and everything, it was about three weeks approximately. It was a and a, it was a, the week, yeah, three weeks approximately. And Toronto Argonauts had just signed Ro- Rocket Ismail for that big contract. If you remember that. Okay. Uh, Joe Tonahill was our family lawyer in Jasper, Texas. He was good friends with the late John, late actor John Candy, who owned part of the Toronto Argonauts. I did not know that. So, not- yeah. So next night, you know, you know, Joe Tonahill represented Jack Ruby back in the day. Well, next thing you know, I get a phone call. I'm on the plane going to Toronto. The day that I signed a contract with Toronto Argonauts was the day that my grandparents received a letter in the mail that I was accepted back at UT. Whoa. But, but when you sign a pro contract, your scholarship is voided. You done. Done. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's what's, what happened. You know, because if you think about it, I mean – as a freshman, as a freshman, and I'm not boasting and bragging or anything like that, but as a freshman, I did something no other freshman has had did in the history of the of the uh, the school, and maybe you know, maybe it was timing. I don't know, but I had like a hundred votes for the Heisman Trophy as a f- true freshman, and uh, you know, I didn't run for a whole lot of yards, but it was the things that I did, you know. I made 500 yards look like 2,000 yards, you know? <laughs> 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 you know? Yeah, you did. Um, yeah, you did. Yeah. And you, can, hey. you had some hands, too. Hands. On the sideline, yeah. that ball did not bounce off your hands. No, nah, man. That's, like I said, brother, that's, that's years of hauling hay and hauling wood, man. I, I mean, shit, you had hands of stone, brother. You know, I think I think girls used to used to get mad at me, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I grabbed that ass too tight, you know, without knowing. <laughs> but but not, head not, unplugged, baby. <laughs> Keep it real, heart. Yeah, man, but uh, you know, but it. it, it that all that experience, man, it, it it humbled me, man. It really did because years later, you know, after I mean, I played with Toronto Argonauts, 
I played with uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, uh, uh, which I kind of regret because that year, had I signed with Dallas Cowboys because Dallas wanted me, I would have had a Super Bowl ring. Um, and uh, you know Keith Cash, remember Keith Cash? Yeah, the, the yeah, he the was twins. at he was at Kansas City Chiefs, and they were, you know, interested in me too. And uh, you know, but um, I came back to visit, um, and you know, the first thing I did, I I, I asked Makovic, I asked him. Can I shake your hand? And he was like, what? And I said, yes, I want to thank you for what you did. Because basically without him knowing what he did, he humbled me because I was so caught up into the hype of, hey, I'm Butch Hadnot and you can't do this to me and, you know, and so on. Not thinking that, first of all, your mouth can get you in a lot of trouble. You know, and I didn't say, I didn't tell you everything that I had said to Makovic. You know, I kind of muted, put a little mute on some of the things. And so that that's that that's kind of what led to him telling me, you know, suspended, you know, you know, just suspended indefinitely. But uh, you know, it was a learning process for me. Uh, because you know, if you're not careful, your mouth can really get you in a lot of trouble. Your attitude, you know, and it's all that's it's, there's a, there's an old saying, your attitude determines your aptitude. And, you know, and I, 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 I live by that, you know, and I emphasize that, you know, when I'm working with kids, uh, the young guys now, you know, that I run into, uh, you know, down at UT, you know, y'all were talking about social media and everything, man. This, this, this social media stuff is, is just gone out of hand. You know, these kids, man, they, they pay so much attention to that and, 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 and less attention to, getting their mind right, getting their body right to go into war. You know, they worried about what people are saying about them and stuff like that. Who gives a damn what they're saying about you? Because whether you're good or bad, people go talk about you. Butch, I wanted to ask you I that. I wanted to talk to you about I want to talk to you about that aspect of it. Like what is the biggest thing that you could teach somebody right now about social media that can make them understand about the positives, I know you're probably not a big social media guy, but the positives and the negatives, because of the simple fact that now they're making money off of this entire thing. And as we move forward, what is the best messaging that you can give a kid? You know, uh, stay away from it. You know, stay off of it. You know, especially if anything, during during specifically football players during football season, stay off of it. Stay off of it. Focus on what you on the task at hand. You know, because you don't need any distractions, and all that is nothing but a distraction. All of that is. You know, you you had a guy that was uh, that I had talked to. Uh, you know, Keontae Ingram. And I feel very strongly because of social media and everything. That's what led him to uh, leave University of Texas. Because he listening to what other people are saying, you know, and everything, instead of looking at, at yourself. You know, looking at, at, at you. You know, a lot of us sometimes, man, we, 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 we're into focus on other people you know, uh, and blaming them instead of ourselves. You know, social media is a choice. You can get on there if you choose to, and, or you can choose not to get on there. You know, but it's you got to deal with the consequences. You got to be man enough and ready enough to deal with the consequences of whatever information you put out there or whatever information you get from it. No, that's sage no, advice. That's but, advice. Um, one thing that uh, Harge, when we were talking about the name, image, likeness, uh, Harge brought up a good point of, you know, there is a relationship there between social media and the NIL, that is the name, image, and likeness. Now, uh, Butch, uh, before we get to your man cave story, what the hell happened on that January 1st day against Miami 
in the Cotton Bowl. Because I know when you and I talked, a win over Miami, you guys would have been national champions that year, correct? Yeah, that is true. You know, the people, the public, you know, is so focused on, you know, 2005 season, you know, Vince Young era, you know, yeah, they won the national championship. But when you go down there to that dressing room and to the locker room and everything, you will see WIT all over the place, you know, wit, whatever it takes. You know, we started that in 1990. You know, we started that. There's a film out there called the, uh, the 1990 season. You know, we, we started that. The Shock the Nation Tour. Yes, had we beat Miami, we would have been national champions. But the week of preparation, it wasn't emphasized enough why we were there. We were just happy to we were just happy to be there. Now them sons of them them sons of bitches from Miami, man, they did not even want to be there. So they was, you know, they already had a chip on their shoulder. You know? They they I mean they if you ever see that clip 30 for 30 to you, you know, and, and two of those guys I wound up playing with at Tampa Bay, and Lord knows I heard it every damn day of practice. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, and it, I mean, every damn day. Lamar Thomas, uh, Craig Erickson. Craig Erickson was our quarterback. Lamar Thomas was a was a wide receiver attempt, and I'm like, God damn, man. But yeah, if we'd have beat Miami, man. That that we would have been national championships. But I tell you what, though, I take my hat out to those guys, man. They, you know, 15 of their players went to the pros that year. Yes, uh, they they had a squad. They really did. And that was the hardest I've ever been hit in playing football. <laughs> I mean, you know, I never forget. Uh, you know, Sean, if you remember this game hard, I don't know if you saw the game. Oh, yeah. But, I, do. Uh, I know every very at, well, bro. <laughs> at the beginning of the game, you know, we were out there warming up. Robert Bailey, number 23, yes. told Chris yes. Samuels, he said, hey, two, three. I'm knocking your ass out. First play of the game, I'm knocking your bitch ass out. And I told Chris, I said, Chris, man, don't worry about them dudes, man. They, ain't, they <laughs> you know, they're just talking a lot of shit. Man, let me tell you something. The TV, the sound on that you hear on the TV does not do any justice. Standing on that sideline, it was, first of all, it was cold as hell that day. Yes, I mean, cold yes, as hell. Man, I'm standing beside Kerry, Kerry Cash, and they kick off to us. I guarantee you, Robert Bailey probably ran a full flat in the 40 that day. He got down that field so goddamn fast. Chris caught the football. Man, it sounded like a damn shotgun. Pike y'all. <laughs> and I looked at I looked at Kerry and I said, oh shit. <laughs> you know, but I mean, man, that that, but you know, that game, and I take, I tell you what, I could kick Stan Thomas' ass because had he not opened up his damn mouth, you know, talking all that noise during the week of preparation, you know, things might have might have turned out differently. But that son of a gun, big rascal, was talking so much shit, man. I'm like, man, don't be adding fuel to the fire, you know. I never forget at the damn barbecue, we all in a suit and tie. Miami coming up in there with gold chains on, looking like Uncle Luke. You know, <laughs> got on the Miami jackets and you know and everything. <laughs> I'm like, damn, you know, <laughs> shit. Really? They coming in, they dancing the country music while we sitting over there like little nice boys, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I tell you what though, man, the thing that that really stood out to me is uh, after the game, uh, Russell Maryland, uh, uh, Michael Barrow, uh, even Robert Bailey, you know, a few of the more of those guys, they ran, they, they ran me down and told me, you know, man, you the hardest running back we faced all year. Uh, because the run during the season, the running game or running backs, they didn't average over, over 40 yards against them. You know, and, and whereas, you know, 
in the right situation, the right time, you know, I had over a hundred against them. Uh, and that, you know, and that's kind of stood out against that, that type of defense that they had, you know, but that, that go along with, you know, had, you know, just that, man, if we'd have started out like that, if Stanley Richard would have caught that in a, that interception, you know, things probably would have been different, you know. Uh, Butch, you and I were coming to Texas at the same time. I was recruited for football and baseball. Um, I ended up signing with Montreal. So a lot of the dudes that I was playing with in baseball were Miami fans. So I had to listen to it. Not only – I'm glad I wasn't on the field Good getting knocked fans. out by, like, Chris Samuels. But uh, at the end of the day – I was like, Nick Cadnox is a Texas boy, and that's how we get done. So you represented <laughs> well for Texas, bro. Hey, I, hey, man, I take my head out too, man. My boy Chris Samuels, man, we still talk to this day. As a matter of fact, Sean, he called me before we got on on here. You know, uh, Chris came back in the game, you know. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he, he came back in the game and, you know, and hey. You know, he, he he was trying to do his thing, you know. And, hell, there was one time where I made a good play and made a good run, but I got hit so hard my vision was blurry. And I'd be damned if Lynn Amity didn't call the same play again. I told Chris, man, I can't see. You know, so Chris, you know, <laughs> stood up. I, I made a missed block look like, look like the world, man. And, you know, Chris, you know, got down the field and everything. But, uh, yeah, man, that, that, that was a – Man, wow, that was a hell of a game, man. It, it, it you know, it was it was a different. And you know, um, the Rock played on that team. Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. I completely yeah. forgot about that. Oh no, he was yeah, on the Rock. Team. He, yeah. yeah, he was number. He was number. Uh, he 94, was number 90, 90, 94, 94, 94, 94. Yeah, yeah, the Rock played on that team. Did you sure get a did. good hit on him blocking him? Man, I knocked the shit out of the rock. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there's a picture. There's a picture on uh, out there, you know, uh, of three guys on me, you know, trying to take me down. And uh, I think he, he, I think he was one of them. I'm not for sure, but uh, I know Jeb, Michael Barrow, and. Couple more guys was you know was around me, but uh, yeah, man, I tell you, man, that that was a that was a hell of a game, man. I mean, other than getting our ass whooped, you know, we we just we we were turning things around too late, you know. Yeah. That uh, was, you know, Butch. That was a good time, and that was honestly a good coaching staff. Uh, Mick Williams was starting to get that hump, get over that hump. The ninety-one happened because you guys lost a lot, but for you. You know, it's an experience. It's a story. Like I said at the beginning, it's inspiring. Man, you are you keep it real. Keep it 100. Your humor is amazing. You work with kids, and now you're at your stage in your own career. Now, Harge, what do you think, man? Jim Jackson, man cave story time. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. I think uh, I'm sure he's got plenty of them right now. Because of what he said earlier about that conversation he had with Chris Samuel. Hey, man, it's okay. Don't worry about it. He's just talking shit. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's 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 basically how it was, you know, with 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 uh, with the guys, you know. Um, and, and if you and I and the thing about me is, I was kind of like Barry Sanders, you know. I never really celebrated when I scored a touchdown. Uh, you know, it was just, I just felt like, you know, hey, that's part of the job, uh, you know, and I I, I kind of got that from uh, my conversation with Earl Campbell because Earl never really, you know, celebrated when he scored a touchdown, you know, uh, and, you know, and so he, Earl told me something and, and he's a big reason why I came to UT, uh, other than UT told me I was going to play as a true freshman, but Earl, as a running back, you always want to fall forward, never backwards. And and that you know that stuck on me, you know. And and uh, and I used to get pissed off, man, if one guy tackled me. You know, Earl was the same way. Uh, he was my idol, man. He he was, I mean, he was everything, you know, to me. To, uh, 
you know, talking to him and he was kind of like a mentor to me, uh, you know, and everything. And he, he, other than the other natural things that I've already, that I already had, you know, as far as the, the outlook, uh, you know, I learned a lot from Earl. That's, that's the one thing that I think uh, he had. So he's continues. He's trans. How can I say this? Transgenerational guy who has, when you think of UT football, you ask a five, maybe 10 year old guy and it's Earl Campbell. And obviously Vince and Ricky. Hey, Butch, it has been a pleasure. Your storytelling, man, you can make, you can monetize your stories. <laughs> if, if, <laughs> I mean, especially the ones about Miami and that cotton bowl. Well, hey, I mean, there, there are a couple of more stories, you know, uh, OU, uh, you know, that game against OU and, and uh, they were, you know, they were talking smack, you know, and everything. And they didn't know anything about me, you know, at the time. And, and I'm like, who the hell are these guys talking shit to me? You know, this, this was during the warm up, you know, 1990. I'm like, man, the dudes don't know me. And so, you know, ironically, Couple of preparation, you know, for the OU game, and so uh, that day of the game, you know, I was like hoping I get in there, you know. And uh, man, I feel Brown the way he was getting hit. I looked at AD and I said, "Man, Phil ain't gonna last too much longer in this game, man. He getting shit knocked out of him because they they would. I mean, seriously, out of all the running backs, they were talking shit to me before the game, and I'm like. You don't even know me. What, what the hell? I, you know, I, I told uh, I told AD, man, soon, man, if I get in this game, I'm busting what you call his ass, man. And, you know, and that was like, you know, that was kind of like the, uh, that was kind of like the start of my career, you know, that particular game, uh, you know, at the, at the right time, you know, it sparked the, the runs I made, sparked the, you know, sparked the team, the offensive line, you know, blocked their ass off and, uh, you know, and that, that that started that started everything right right there. Uh, you know, and and Sean, man, I really uh, uh, appreciate this. And you know, I look to do this more, man. If y'all want me to be, you know, part part of the team, uh, you know, hey, man, I'm all I'm all for it. Uh, you know, heart, uh, man, I, it's a blessing, man. You know, talk chatting with you, you know, and everything, man. And uh, yes, like Sean mentioned earlier. You know, in the community, yes, I'm, you know, I'm a part of neighborhood sports. Uh, we do NFL youth flag football, NBA juniors basketball. Uh, and I do, in my spare time, strength and conditioning with kids, uh, you know, and, and I just look at it as a way of giving back. You know, I, I did the same thing with my kids. You know, they're, they're grown now and everything. So, you know, I just look at it as a way of giving back and, and, uh, you know, helping out these kids. And every now and then when I get a chance to or if I run into, you know, some players at UT, you know, I never uh, miss a moment to, you know, to talk to them about, you know, how you doing, you know. And and and, uh, and I don't want to just know about, you know, how you doing and as far as preparing for football. No, how you doing in life outside of football? You know, how you doing in the classroom? You know, because – Football is only a moment, you know, it's only a moment. And a lot of people don't even, they, they, they fail to forget, you know, there's like 132, 137 colleges, you know, in the country. It's what, 85 players to a football team? Only 2%, 2% of those guys make it to the pros. You know, take advantage of the opportunity that you have and get that education. Don't wait 15 years to try to come back to school to do it. You know, get it while you can, because it, it's I mean, it, it that carries on things on for you the rest of your life, you know, and it, it opens up a lot of doors. You know, it doesn't guarantee anything. Which I do have to tell you this. I do have to tell you this. You, you have been the most open of anybody that we've interviewed up until this point. And I appreciate the fact of you give bust your ass. I'm a bust your ass mentality. But then you also come back and you give the message of making sure that the education is going to come because this is just a moment of your life. 
I was a professional oh. baseball player for just a moment of my life. Right. I have to be a dad. I have to be a friend. I have to be a husband. I have to be somebody to somebody every for the rest of my life, not just I played a sport. So I appreciate the fact that you touched on that as we ended this segment with you, brother. So, hey. 1990 was a beautiful year because that's when we graduated and then we started rolling, baby. So I'm riding with you. Hey, brother, I'm a 90s, I'm a 90s man, man. I listen to 90s hip hop. Still, <laughs> you know? to this day, to this day. Yeah, to this, to day. this day, brother, you know. Yeah, I was just jamming out some, I was just, yeah, I was just jamming out some Biz Marquee while ago, you know. Already, they say he just yeah, real, but he ain't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but hey, man, let me let me leave you guys with this, man. Psalm seventy-five. You know, if you are willing and obedient, you eat the best from the land. If you rebuke and rebel, you'll be devoured by the sword. You know, for the Lord has spoken. You Amen. know, God, God is everything, brother. Yes, He is. You know, and I, and I give praises to him because God blessed me to see another day that I never seen before. Hello. Hello, Hello man. Hey, hey, Butch, don't, don't, don't we don't want to end this segment without saying this. This is playing off what Hart said and off of what you just said on that verse. We were blessed. We're blessed to meet and have conversations like this. But, man, to sit here and have this type of real inspiring and a sage advice filled conversation with you that's a blessing too yeah well thank I you i just man. want to tell you man. I'm, glad, I'm glad you keep it 100 because that 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 to me is something that i would have said the way that you talked about it is 100 sometimes you got to be pc but when you can be unmuted and un <laughs> <laughs> Uncut. I like that rawness, brother. So I appreciate it. Hey, Butch. What was it? That's what it is, being humble and being true and uh, giving back to the next generation. Butch, let's see those horns up for you, baby. <laughs> Hello? Let's see those horns, man. We're going to head to break. All right, brother. And hey, man, y'all take it easy, man. Hey, brother. Arch, we'll wrap things up with encapsulating all of what we just heard, and we'll talk about something that we want to hear about your – Draft day, because that's coming up. MLB draft coming up on the other side of this break. For all of your insurance needs, look no further than our primary sponsor, Jim Saxton State Farm Insurance Agency. The ATX OG has been insuring Austin for over three decades. And get this, Jim Saxton is a Longhorn legacy. He is the son of the late, great James Saxton, who was a Heisman finalist. Be sure to give him a call or better yet, visit his website, saxtoninsurance.com and tell him that the stories inside the Man Cave Boys recommended you. You nailed it, man. You absolutely nailed it. That guy, Butch Hadnot, former Texas running back, that great freshman season in 90, he kept it real, and he really just painted the picture to make us feel like we were right there. I have never seen someone really just let us in like that. Yeah, that's the most real thing that we've had thus far. I thought it was outstanding. And, and the fact that, 
the conversations that most people have, Sean, you and I have had these conversations many a times, but at the end of the day, the conversation that he had about the realness of every game and what was going on, it was beautiful, man. It was beautiful. Now, the one thing that I love the most uh, and on top of that, man, was the simple fact that he described that transition from McWilliams to Makovic. <laughs> <laughs> he, he let us know how he felt about him in his office in that conversation. I thought we were back at uh, where were those old uh, Belmont Hall? Where those old offices? Yes, were? That, yes, that sir. Right? yes, sir. <laughs> and it was it was a real conversation, and you know, because everybody wants to be politically correct, and right. they want these young kids to be able to say, "Oh, this, oh that, this is great, this is all this." No, it, sometimes the crap sucks, man, and it's yeah. the reality of it. It's just like our jobs, Sean, even today, even where we were at before, we had tough days, and there was tough conversations that needed to be had. And so for us to think that all these kids need to sit back and just enjoy the fact that they got scholarships, it's BS. It's not that. People want to win. People want to be put in the right positions. And we've talked about this before. If you're not talking to me about making me better, you are ruining my life because you're not putting me in the position to be successful. Same thing with your bosses. Same thing with my bosses. Same thing with me as a boss. I have to be able to put people in positions to win because they're not going to receive you well. Well, and that is what the transition from McWilliams to Makovic was to Butch Hadnot. Yeah, one hundred percent. And you know, it's funny you said that you have to have those those conversations of leadership to put people in the right places. I just had one of those with uh, some of my executives about me, and I, I I don't think they were expecting what I said. I said, you know what? Sometimes I need this. Hey, and and I don't think they were expecting that. I said I owned it, and sometimes I need this to improve my performance. Yeah, and that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. And you got to be humble enough to understand, too. But just remember this. When you're expecting a lot from people and you're not giving them the best of you, they're going to be able to call you out nowadays, and that's the difference. There's no more yes, sir, no, sir. It's why, when, and how are we going to get better at the end of the day. That's it. Now, there's some topics here as we close out the episode 80, 80, baby. Uh, name, image, likeness. Uh, we've been talking about it. I had nauseam for oh, about a better part of seven, eight months, ten months. Uh, it, it really, we see it play out, on, especially on Twitter. But honestly, you and I, we are a little bit closer to the situation because of our, our 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 brother, Mike Murphy, last day in hats, he's in the mix and he's gaining individuals, namely UT athletes, who are involved and have a contract or or are negotiating with him. Um, it is on his side when he released those two videos on you know encouraging playing off of what you said, kids, young men, young women, be smart. Ask these companies, these potential suitors, what their plan is, what they're going to do for you to return what you're going to do for them in exchange for, you know, uh, compensating your name, image, and likeness. I mean, what else have you noticed? Well, I mean, I think that's been the biggest thing for me is just making sure that these kids are being taken care of in the educational piece of it. Um, a lot of them, I'm, I'm glad Mike did what he did. And, and Mike's a guy that started from the bottom and now he's he's rising fast. But as the biggest thing starts to break down, what you want to know is what are you doing to protect yourself? Because there is a cost at this. There's a cost for what we do. There's taxes. There's different things that happen in between this process of you being able to go to the next level. How do I get to the next level and how do I compensate properly without necessarily selling my soul for it? Because everybody needs to understand the value of the dollar ain't the value of the dollar. You know, it's a it's a image and likeness. But 
what is your image and likeness worth? And I'll tell you this, and I've told other people this before. My grandfather always told me, don't forget that you represent my last name. Harge is my last name. And if you go out there and you screw that up, you're not only screwing it up for yourself, you're screwing it up for our family. So you got to make sure that you're doing things the right way in representation of your name, because it's going to be out there for a long time. And that is the biggest thing for me. Well, you know what's happening? That's a great point, man. I need to unmute myself when I'm speaking, brother. It's uh, Big 12 football. It's uh, Big 12 football media days next week. I don't know if we're ready to give picks. We'll have those next week. Your thoughts, man. This is the first event, and I'll be honest with you, Harge, in all my years in the media and everywhere I was at in Texas and Oklahoma City, this was my favorite event this year uh, at Jerry World. It was supposed to have been there last year, but we know what happened. Yeah, this is my favorite event too, Sean. And this is where we get to know a little bit about each team. We get some time with the players and see what they're thinking. I'm disappointed that we're going to miss it this year, but we're going to get some audio from it. We're going to be able to, to tune in to it. But, you know, I'm excited for this football season like no other season. Uh, I think the, what we have in the Big 12, uh, what we have in the SEC, what we have in the Sun Belt, what we have in the Big Ten, what we have, the opportunities are going to be unbelievable when we start breaking it down. But closer, closer to home for you and I, the Big 12 Conference, and, you know, Oklahoma is the team that everybody's talking about. Spencer Rattler, they have so much, and Lincoln Riley has been a monster in the game. But for us, it's the University of Texas with, with, with Coach Sark. And what is he going to do? The expectations are high. You know, he's always talked about Texas being his dream university. We've heard that conversation before. We've heard all of that. What's going to transfer over to the football field where everybody's going to be saying, boom, we're at this spot. Boom, we're at this moment. What is Coach Sark? going to present at Big 12 Media Days? What is everybody going to talk about? Where's Texas Tech this year? Where is Texas Tech going to be? What about West Virginia? Oklahoma State? How is, is, is Mike Gundy ever going to get to the, the pinnacle of the Big 12? I'm, I'm just so excited for football to be right on the horizon for us all. I can't wait. I can't wait to hear every, every coach talk this week. And does does my biggest question is does Kansas have a coach? <laughs> I, think, I think they have some guy from Shawnee High School outside of Kansas City. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, what do we got going on there? You know, uh, Hards. What I will uh, say, uh, I, I, I'm not comfortable making picks. In fact, I hate preseason all conference teams. I hate preseason picks for conferences. That is uh, all I'm going to say is. I think the Big 12 is going to be deeper and will have an improved uh, quality of product this year. Uh, I really do, and I, I firmly believe it. Now, this is something we can hit on just briefly uh, with Todd Orlando um, and a few of the other former Longhorn assistant coaches. Uh, USC has become UTLA, if you will. I mean, the latest you had – some other guys who are transferring there that, I mean, if you go back, you have Brew McCoy, who USC, Texas, back to USC. I mean, what, what are your thoughts on this? Because USC is kind of benefiting from the Longhorn pipeline, so to speak. Well, here's the biggest thing for me, Sean, is, is like when you look at the big picture and you look at how things have kind of gone out, Tom Herman recruited all everybody, right? So at this point, USC has become that university because they got rid of all the coaches. The coaches went out there, and a lot of the people that recruited those kids here were are at USC. I'm not upset. I'm not mad. Uh, some of them 
they didn't get a chance to play when they were at the University of Texas, so we don't know. Uh, the ones that did get a chance to play, they were hurt a lot of times, so we truly don't know who they are. And Sark is bringing in his guys. You know, we've heard that numerous times about this coach got his guys or this coach got his guys or these aren't my guys. At the end of the day, I want kids to be happy. I had a kid that played college basketball. If you're going to go somewhere and get a chance to play and this is your one-time transfer rule, go enjoy yourself and be able to do what you need to do. I don't wish no hate, no ill will. Just be healthy. Go play. And I hope, I hope you get everything out of, of college that you could possibly want, man. And that's all you can. And then individuals who go on social media and blast these young people, there's a, there's, you need to take a step back and, and really look at yourself in the mirror because I, I think it's a, not only fanatic, music, Sean, fanatic, off pudding. I'm just going to keep it mild right here. Uh, real quick for you. This is a special coming, special time coming up, especially for you because you experienced it. I want to say Major League Baseball's June amateur draft. This year it's July. We're going back to almost max picks now after there were only five rounds last year due to COVID. This year's draft, obviously, Secaucus, New Jersey, not the best named town in America, but man, this is special. I mean, do you see – who do you see is going to be – we'll take Texas, for example, because there's going to be some high school kids from the area get their opportunity like you did, and you were a high draft pick. But do you see all these – there's going to be tons of Longhorns. Who do you see from Texas who will get drafted but comes back next year? Well, well, Sean, I want, I want, to, I want to make sure that you – Use this as my tell me something good segment, man. The 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 Jim Saxon State Farm Insurance Agency tell me something good segment, bro. That's what I want to make this one for me. Definitely gonna save that one, brother. For uh tell me something good. I got something for you. Uh this is special to you and so I want to show you a piece of video before we go to that special segment. And here it is. They backed off. Roddy comes the cross back in. Gallagher! John Gallagher! Austin FC's first goal at Q2 Stadium. My man, you love it. You got it. Your your family loves this soccer. One word, a few words to wrap up that incredible night at Q2 Stadium last week. Go! <laughs> That's all I got to tell you, man. We were there. Well, they celebrated right in front of us. There was a bunch of opportunities early. My son was losing his mind. He was like, we've got to score a goal. We've got to score a goal. It was outstanding. We had a great time at the game. Uh, I'm glad Austin FC finally won. As we're recording this episode of Stories Inside the Man Cave, they're getting ready to play another game tonight. Uh, I'm excited for this place, right? The Austin, Texas. I've been watching. I've been paying attention. My son's part of the program. And as I look at the games, and there was 20,000 people in the stands last week. It was the most exciting moment because not only did they score goals, they scored four, but not only that, the people were so energized with the way that this team played and the fact that it's unique to Austin, Texas. We got a professional team where we live, man, and a professional soccer team at that. We talk about it every week, Sean. 140 people move to Austin, Texas every day. Every day. 140 people move here, and they're moving from other places. There may not be big Texas fans. They may not be big Texas A&M, Texas Tech, SMU, anybody that you want, Dallas Cowboys, Houston Texans. But this is the one team in this place 
that everyone can get behind and to watch the way that people love soccer here. It was utterly amazing last week, and I'm glad that you posted that because that is awesome. It was more than awesome. It was just like Murphy's baby awesome. It was that. Uh, it was is incredible. I love that green lights, which takes us to. Hey Ben, tell me something good. Yes, sir. DJ Harge bringing in the voice. The guy has a future in voiceover work. Tell me something good brought to you by Cosmic Coffee and Beer Garden on the south side. Give Paul Ovasi a shout out and tell him that Clinch and Harge said you want a boozy coffee drink. Harge, boozy. tell me something good. Boozy. <laughs> boozy. Let me tell you something good, Sean. You brought it up a little while ago. You talked about my draft day experience, man. Let me just explain something to you. And this goes for football, basketball, soccer, hockey, any sport, badminton. I don't care what you ever have an opportunity to be drafted in. This moment for these kids is unbelievable because of the fact that you put so much time and effort traveling, your mom and dad uh, driving you to practices, your, your, your aunts and uncles stepping up, your grandparents being able to give you that opportunity to say, hey, man, I got my name called on draft day. You brought it up, Sean, last year. It was only five rounds, so it was very limited. And you asked which Longhorns would get drafted and come back. I don't know because – if you have an opportunity to get drafted in these days and times, you need to take the opportunity to go. You do because you don't know what the rules are going to be. You may be one of those kids from last year's group that ended up having to come back or, or the ones that said, I'm going or had to have those conversations with those hard conversations with coaches and say, hey, co hey, player, I don't think you're going to be able to play for us next year. Go get your money. If you're going to get an opportunity to go get paid, go get paid. Because at the end of the day, at, 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 at the end of it all, man, you only want to hear your name called. You want to be able to say, I was drafted by Montreal, you know, in the second round. When we didn't have cell phones, we didn't have social media. They <laughs> had to keep going back there. They had to keep calling my house. They had to keep calling my house because I was at the swimming pool talking to my girlfriend because I didn't know if I was going day one, day two, or day three. I just knew that I was going to get my name called. And now they have flying you to different cities. They got you doing different things. Um, it, was a, it was a moment in my life that I will never, ever forget. And I hope that some of the kids from the University of Texas, some of the high school kids that have been covered by you and I, some of the games that we have called and the people that we know who have sons that play baseball, it's a very special moment that will live with me for the rest of my life. And so... I, any moment that the major league draft comes about, I've always had a special, special place in my heart for it because that moment changed my life. That moment changed my family's life. And I know that it's going to change some other players. So I'm really excited about it and I can't wait for it to happen. But hey, Sean, do me a favor. Tell me something good, player. I got you, brother. I want to encapsulate three things. First of all, I am an adrenaline junkie. A couple of weeks ago, I went to Fentress outside of San Marcos, checked a box, finally went skydiving. If you thought about it and you keep hesitating to do it, just go out there and do it. You will not regret it. Those people at. Yes, uh, I will. I'm not oh. doing it. <laughs> <laughs> that place is a phenomenal operation. It's safe. Uh, it's not for everybody, but man, to see the world from that perspective and to feel all the elements to float through a cloud, 
um, and just hit the ground again. It was an adrenaline rush. I, I, I just I cannot I just cannot put into words exhilarating. That's what I'll describe it. And I and I just want to thank. I know we bash social media a lot, and but we're all on every platform because that's what we do. That's that's, that's the world. But I have to give a shout out to every single generous person who took the time out to just to write three words. I'm I'm overwhelmed by all that on the, my B day this past year on July oh, last week on July fourth. It's unbelievable, and it goes back to what you and I have mentioned before. Some people just need to hear that and and to reach out to people to see how they're doing. And Storming, Norman Watkins, always the day after mine for his birthday, that dude always does it right, man. So happy birthday again to Norman, and thank you all who took the time to wish this 48-year-old, ball-headed, short dude happy birthday, including you, my brother. My, Mike Hards, appreciate you. Always, brother. Always. And, you know, you know, I was with Storm and Norman. We called you and yeah. uh, wish you a happy birthday. My grandfather, my late grandfather's birthday, same day as yours. And uh, good people were born on that day, man. And I, I appreciate the friendship. I appreciate the time. And I appreciate everything, man. So happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to my boy Storm and Norman. And happy birthday to my grandfather, Sergeant Harge, George T. Harge. You are the man. Respect to him. For the absent, Big Mike Murphy of Last Stand Hats, Coach Mo, who just texted and said, man, I'm training these next level Anderson Trojans. Much love to you and much love to Butch Hat Not for keeping it real and all he's doing in this community. Wake your ass up for Coach Mo and for Big Mike. We'll, we'll all get together sometime soon. And for you, Harge, holla yeah. at your boy. <laughs> you see the drippy, I'm fitted up. I'm in my car in the giddy up.